Hey, fun fans. To get you pumped for infinite recharge, our friends at West Coast Products have provided a giveaway of a Spartan number 25 or number 35 chain tensioner. To enter, be a YouTube subscriber and let us know in the comments your top prediction for infinite recharge. You can enter in any video that has this intro and the winner will be announced in the fun discord on Saturday, January 4th. So make sure you comment below. First Updates Now videos are brought to you by Stryker. Discover why so many FIRST alumni and mentors are putting Stryker first when it comes to their careers, internships, and co-ops. Visit careers.stryker.com forward slash first to learn more. Our uh, last little group before we get into the top 15 teams uh, is going to be started off by Team 200. Yeah, Team 200, Burt Mann uh, from FRC 4750. Had some pretty cool design choices. Uh, I like that they had the binary shooting. Lots of teams decided to go with a motorized uh, turret system that was hard to control for, I know, for a lot of teams, uh, like in 2013. So I really like the binary piston up, down, um, and the intake and then outtake uh, mechanism. It makes it a lot more simple and reliable. The one thing I don't like is that they use a really long hex shaft as their pivot system for their shooter, which is just a big no-no. Um, they should have used something like a two inch or one and a half inch tubing and then used some plugs and adapters, which would have been a lot stronger. Uh, and their corner bumpers um, make my eyes hurt. So, <laughs> hey, corner bumpers require you to CAD less. Think about it. <laughs> G20. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's move on to our next team. Another great name for Cothran 450. Yeah, Team Gray V Robotics. Um, this is a cool submission. This is um, yet another small, short, light, agile bot. Um, they've got an interesting, they've got intakes on both sides, uh, on the front and back of the robot, that all funnel into uh, a central shooter. Um, pretty cool concept. I will say um, some of the finer details definitely need a lot more work. Um, they... Uh, the intakes probably wouldn't hand off to the shooter all that well. And then the way they did their shoulder joint is not uh, not recommended. Um, the, the, the hex hub was basically they cut in half of a hex into the end of two tubes and then riveted the tubes together. And that was the, you know, and the um, hex axle was mounted to the shooter. I don't recommend doing that in real life. That will not work. Um, also, they used OG tough boxes. Which is really interesting, like the old tough box gearboxes from Andy Mark without the tough box spacers. I'm actually kind of impressed where they got that CAD file without the tough box spacers. So well done on that. Um, but Gravy Robotics came in at rank 30. Hmm. Interesting to see uh, the older, they, they obviously had to work hard to get those yeah. CAD files. Yeah, <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on to our next team, which is Team 345. Troy, what did you think about them? Three, four, five, just outside of the top 15 <laughs> of rank number 18. Uh, this is kind of interesting. Their team name is Kev Creates, and it's just Kevin from 1902, as you may have guessed based on the color scheme. Uh, this robot looks like it was complicated to be complicated, and they kind of admitted that in the scouting doc, so, you know, just... <laughs> pointing that out but uh there's a lot of kind of neat stuff going on here in detailing they claim there was no part of the cad left unfinished though i do have a lot of errors i found but i'm not going to worry about those too much this is catathon it, my main issue is this seems like a very spindly arm like this seems like something if it was outside the frame parameter and you got a defense spot running up to you it's just gonna go ham on that um nice and this is fun. Yeah, this was also a very light robot. Uh, so that might add to the whole issue with defense and being kind of spindly and not super rigid with the arm. Yeah, re really a cool looking arm, but I definitely agree with you there to where if a defense bot comes up to it, they might encounter a lot of uh, issues there. All right, uh, let's move on to our next team, which is team 379. Team 379 Mimitar from 1369 Minotaur, good good name, was ranked 32. Um, I actually like this robot. They were pretty well, they had a good flow on the robot. Everything kind of made sense and looked like it would work properly, which is hard to do when you're just catting something and not prototyping. 
The only thing is that their blocker or whatever that vertical thing is going on wasn't finished or was too small and wouldn't block anything. And I think they also used a seat motor on their shooter, if I'm not mistaken, or a, some sort of Bosch motor. So that's cool. That's pretty creative. Um, I like their front little two intakes going on. They have two little side wheels that I think were compliant. And I think that actually would work pretty well, um, despite not having an actual over bumper intake or anything like that. And I guess their battery just kind of up in the air is really high. And I don't really like that. It's probably going to fall out and cause some problems. So overall, I think this robot was well done. The lightning was good and the gusseting was pretty impressive. So well done. Yeah, the uh, the two external intakes remind me a little bit of uh, 4276 in 2017, where they had the two side rollers there. Um, all right, uh, let's move on to our next team, uh, which is Team 448. Yeah, Team Gearheads. Um, this was an interesting robot. Uh, fortunately, at first blush, it looks really good. And then as I started looking at more and more of the details, there's some pretty big errors, unfortunately. Uh, one of the big things is their intake looks cool. I like the idea. It's uh, They said it was inspired by 1619, uh, the top and bottom rollers. Um, but the way they did it, they messed up the belt routing for their intake. And so the top and the bottom halves would always be fighting each other. And so... It was, really, it was really unfortunate to see, like, oh, this is cool. This looks neat. I like this. Start looking at closer details. And they even had, like, an opportunity. They had an intermediary belt that they could have just flipped, done figure eight, and they would have gotten the directions right. But they didn't. They uh, So the two halves of the intake were always going to be fighting each other. Um, same thing with the uh, their elevator um, bearing blocks. They had really, really compact elevator bearing blocks. I was like, oh, those look really good. Uh, started taking a closer look, and they really weren't possible to manufacture, even if you just said, oh, we're going to 3D print them, um, is missing hardware. And when I looked at it, I realized if they tried to put hardware in the model, it wouldn't have worked at all. So overall, some really good ideas and some really good concepts. This one just needed like 15 or 30 minutes of just like really going and paying attention to it at the very end, and they could have really improved their score and fixed some of those small details. Uh, but overall, pretty good submission from Gearheads. That ended up ranked 38. Yeah, it's a good example of throwing uh, hardware into CAD, especially in the important places, uh, can save yep. you from a lot of issues later down the road. Yep. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and move on to our next team. Uh, Troy, what did you think of Team 215? So we've got Team 215, Delta Dynamics, ranked 23 in the Catathon. It's three students from Texas Torque, I believe. Uh, so this robot, when I looked at it, I'm like, somebody said we're going to intake on four sides, and then you guys just kind of made it happen. There's like this crazy like belt routing that uses two motors to drive these four like separate sided intakes, uh, which notably can't intake from the corner of the field, even though there's four of them. Uh, kind of neat system layout. They had like this kind of shooting mechanism that could change directions to route it up to the elevator or shoot out the front of the robot with more force. Than the intake alone. Uh, my main issue was this robot seems like it could beach really easily. There's this big plate on the bottom that's pretty close to the ground, and that it seems like that either would get stuck on like the smallest thing, or you'd end up a lot of friction if your uh, swerve drive wheel started wearing down. Also, 18 feet per second, a little bit fast, but probably okay with swerve. They've also used up all of their PDP slots, so no vision system. Sad face. <laughs> no, no spot for uh, that limelight or that Oscar eye. Mm -hmm. You hate to see it. All right, uh, let's move on to our next team, which is Team 488. Yep, Team Vet OTR from FRC 1374, ranked 49 in this catathon. Um, overall, the robot was really cool. They had a dual-sided 1323-2017 style thing going on, which uh, worked well that year. But I didn't like how their pans for the bottom of the puck kind of dragged along the ground. Um, it kind of would definitely break. Uh, in 2017, we had a metal pan that picked up the gear off the ground and it just mangled as it got caught in the carpet. So something to look out for there. Um, I like the small single stage elevator that they had going on. It was not complicated at all, but I think it would actually work quite well. The only problem is that they used a really weird method of shooting. Um, it's like some sort of 
police system with uh, I don't even really know what was going on there, to be honest, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't going to work. And they don't really have another way of holding on to the puck when it's in the middle of that um, handoff intake thing. So overall, the robot was actually pretty cool. It was creative, and I liked the design of it. With a couple more details and maybe a couple more motors on that handoff intake, I think it actually would perform pretty well. Yeah, it looks like, uh, just like you said, with a little bit more work, it could be uh, very competitive. All right, uh, I I I don't I give up with these uh, team names. Catherine, what'd you think of Team Eight? So, uh, well, Catherine comes back to life. Uh, team Eight was Team Caddy Wampus. Uh, just another great name. Uh, the robot was produced by Colin, Samuel, and Carmel. Uh, they're from Team. 5806 um and they ranked 21st um i do not hear one moment sorry about that not a problem once giving you back uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about team eight's robot team eight so old team they've been doing it since the very beginning or at least they were around for the first catathon really cool to see um <laughs> when when I went into this, I was hoping that someone would try this robot. I was hoping that someone would make this happen. Uh, shooting the pucks vertically with like a single flywheel shooter. So that was, when I started, this was what I wanted to see, and they delivered. This was by far the most creative robot that I judged. Um, they had a really, really whack intake that like the wrist rotated to put it, to get it to the vertical orientation. Really enjoyed seeing all of that. They also had a uh, six mini uh the neo 550 uh flipped gearbox which i really enjoyed seeing as well overall just really cool robot um there were definitely some parts that were like impossible to manufacture or wouldn't actually work that well uh the hood using the spacers as the backing material for a hard plastic wheel doesn't actually work that well but overall i just loved the concept i was delighted that someone thought to make this and it was just a very fun submission um, so this from Team Caddy Wampus, another great name, uh, ended up at rank 21 for their efforts. Yeah, really, a uh, really creative way of uh, going about the game. All right, uh, let's move on to Team 471. Troy, what did you think of them? So we've got Team 471 named Stinkworks, rank 19. Uh, as you might have guessed, this was some Skunkworks students, two of them. Uh, this robot is kind of like, when I looked at it, I'm like, this is a tank. Like, it reminds me of, a, what was it, 2910 Superstructure this year. They've got these really big, thick quarter-inch plates that make up the main body of that. And they just kind of load the puck from one side, travels through the robot, and then this shooter that can adjust vertically and shoots right out. Uh, so pretty simple overall design. But they've got a lot of nice detailing here, a lot of nice pocketing. Uh, some things I've thought were kind of overkill. They're using two Neo motors just to adjust their shooter angle, which uh, seems a little bit off. Uh, they've also maxed out PDP slots, and I think they have some degrees of freedom which aren't really necessary, or they have some things separately powered they could have kind of tied together, I feel like. Uh, but yeah, a lot of like kind of neat detail work in here that you don't always see, but still missing some things for Catathon. Yeah, uh, really good looking robot uh, from Team 471, uh, kind of going with the Skunk Works uh, theming there, uh, with the white and black, uh, really slick robot. All right, uh, let's move on to our next team, which is Team 508. Yeah, Team 508, led by Victor, named Vic Vic, wasn't able to take the victory today in rank 55 <laughs> from FRC wow. 1102. <laughs> Um, they had a, the most prominent note I had in my doc here was relax on the wheels, bro. Cause they had a lot of wheels on their intake and, um, that's not good, but they did have a really cool, um, like seesaw style thing going on where the center of their intake kind of flops back and forth, depending on where the puck is, which is actually something that I thought was going to be really effective. What I didn't think was going to be effective was their V groove roller bearing elevator um i don't like v groove anythings and i don't think they work very well and this is also like four stages so four stage v groove um 
don't think you're going to have a lot of fun with that during a match. And they're, I don't know what those two circles were in the back, but I think they were supposed to be gears, and they don't have any teeth on them or anything. So I don't think that's going to work either. But other than that, the drivetrain was actually pretty well done, and I think it would move. So good work. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really like how that's a good recommendation for a future uh, COTS part, the gear teethless gear. Uh, coming soon to a FRC competition near you. Get right on. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to uh, Team 80. Yeah, Team 80. Uh, great team name again. Their team name is... It's just a shrug. That's their team name. Um, this uh, this is a fun robot. This is actually a kit bot, um, but it was a really, really great example of just going with a kit bot and then making a really, really good game piece manipulator. So I really enjoyed seeing that. Um, they've got a really, really neat, like a, a very clever way of doing the intake where they've got linear rods and their intake kind of drops down. You can see it there. Um, and then once they have the puck, the, it just kind of lifts the puck up into their shooter. And so that was really, really neat to see. Um, they have a very well-designed, uh, wrist shoulder. Uh, they've got a custom gearbox and they're using, uh, bronze bushings on large OD tubes. So not doing the hex shaft that, um, we mentioned earlier. Um, so that's all really good to see. I would have liked to have seen more sensors. I would have liked to see a some sort of sensing, uh, like something to actually sense that the pucks were in the intake. Would have been really nice, like a beam brake sensor or uh, absolute encoders or Hall effect sensors on the wrist or shoulder travel. Um, but aside from that, really good, um, robust, very thorough. I really enjoyed this robot um, and loved seeing the application of the kit bot. And so they ended up at rank 22. Yeah, really cool to see uh, the kit bot being used in that way uh, to create a very effective robot. Yep. Um, all right, uh, let's move on to Team 262. Brian? Yep, Team 262, LotBot, was ranked 53 this time, and from FRC 568, Lawton was the designer of this robot. Um, at a first glance, it looks like a really simple robot that doesn't actually have anything. But after I hit a few things in the CAD, there's actually some stuff underneath, which was good to see. Surprisingly, I think this was the first team that I saw with Sims. So back in the good old days, I see. Um, the drivetrain was solid. The battery box was spectacular. Great job on that. Um, the one thing I wanted to note, though, their intake used a lot of HTD uh, belting from Bex, which is good, but it doesn't seem like it would be very um, grippy on this year's uh, game piece. So something to watch out for. Maybe try using urethane belting or something more grippy next time, because I don't think that would be very effective. Other than that, though, I like the simplicity. That's really all there is, simplicity. Yeah, uh, simplicity. And uh, going with Sims, uh, maybe they didn't get word up in Alaska uh, where Team 568 at is that uh, Brushless is here in FRC. But who knows? <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on to Team 433, 434. <laughs> yeah, 434, Bucks' Wrath, uh, another interesting name. Um, this is a pretty good robot. Um, I actually, it's kind of funny, at, at, first, at first blush, uh, it's kind of the opposite of one of the teams earlier. It doesn't look great, but once you start looking at some of the details, they actually really paid attention and did some good ne good things uh, underneath the hood. Um, got a simple intake on one side that flips over and spits into the little hole at the top of their shooter. Not actually a fan of that. Looking at some of the geometry and the way that it just seems very inconsistent and would likely lead to lost pucks uh, if somebody hits you while you were trying to attempt your handoff. Uh, so not a, not a big fan of that. Um, but I do appreciate like the disparate mechanisms and the handoff there. Um, their shooter's pretty good using six inch pneumatic wheels. It's an interesting choice, but I think it actually would work pretty well for the pucks. Um, would have liked to see more like control or backing material for the, the opposing surface of the pucks, but overall pretty good. Um, so, and they included pretty good bumper mounting, which I really appreciate it. So overall a detailed, well done submission. I think it was a solo CAD too, so that's really good. Uh, and they ended up at rank 16. So just missing the top 15. Yeah, really a uh, really good looking robot from a uh, single team there, or a single person team. Yep. All right, uh, let's move on to team uh, 462 now. 
So we got team 462, the 9 inch nails, ranked 17 in the catathon, just missing that top 15. It's 3599 students. Uh, this robot's kind of interesting. It has two pretty much independent systems, basically. Uh, there's so there's an intake on one side that's exclusively for ground scoring. You can see it on the front there. And on the back side, they have kind of an intake and an uptake to their elevator for the higher heights and scoring of the goal. Uh, for me, that seems like it would strategically back you into a lot of corners. I could see some situations where you use one intake and you're like, oh, shoot, the other one would have made more sense for what we want to do right now. Uh, in the CAD, there was a few things I hated so much. Uh, they used chain and then they used like aluminum spacers to like tension the chain and wrap it around corners, which is like, ugh. and they also had this kind of neat thing to save space for the Robo Rios on top of the PDP if a flip open, but then there's a giant bar going over that. So you can't actually flip the Robo Rio up. Um, so that feels like kind of a recycled part into this robot that does not make sense for this particular design. Yeah, pretty seems like it would be a pretty simple effective robot just strategically i'm not so sure about it we'd have to see this game in real life almost yep can definitely agree there all right our uh, last team before we get into the top 15 teams and draw our third giveaway uh brian why don't you tell us about team 207. yep team 207 207 abra cad dabra fantastic name from FRC 5813, Lucas, Julia, and Bri Brianna. Um, they really like their 90 degree drives. That's all I can say. There's like six of them or seven of them on this robot. And um, yeah, maybe you could have done something else other than that for some of these spots. Um, but overall, the robot was pretty good. It was one of the higher ranked teams that I got to judge. So that, that was great. I liked that this team didn't actually use a pan to pick up the bottom of the puck, they used a roller. Um, that is something that I really personally liked because that means you're not going to have issues with maintenance or anything like that, having like sand rubbing against the carpet, as I mentioned in a lot of other robots. And their swerve was good, but I think it was caught. I'm not too sure, but I think it was. It's also missing yeah, the encoder. Missing the encoder, so come on, like at least put the encoder on. And um, I actually really like their their whatever they had going on with the four bar i think it was pretty cool and i thought it'd actually be pretty fast at scoring so they got pretty high on the effective category yeah uh really cool to see uh from team 207 uh make an effective use of that cots swerve thanks for watching if you want more fun content be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos you can also directly help support fun by visiting our patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.